Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to review the 7mm Shooting Times Westerner. So we're going to do a deep dive into its history. We're also going to look at its ballistics and why it had its 15 minutes of fame and how it's kind of a dead cartridge right now. Should be a fun video. Let's get into it. It all started in 1979. A man by the name of Lane Simpson, who was a gun writer for Shooting Times, had a 8mm Remington Mag. And back in 79, the 8mm Remington Magnum was a little bit more popular than it is today. And he kind of started to think of what he could do with necking up and necking down the 8mm Remington Magnum. And he came to the conclusion that necking it down to 7mm would probably be his best bet for performance wise. His thought process was that, I mean, in 79, there was only two 7mm Magnums, the 7mm Rem Mag and the 7mm Weatherby. Both of those cartridges were based off a shortened 375 H&H, not a full length 375 H&H, which is what the 8mm Remington Magnum is. The early name that Lane came up with for this cartridge was the 7mm Remington Maximum. The idea was that this cartridge was based off the 8mm Remington Mag, and so he wanted to give credit to Remington, but also you got to think that this cartridge, the 7mm Rem Mag, well, was very popular. So I needed to change it a little bit. So hence 7mm Remington Maximum. Now Lane decided not to get a custom gun made in the 7mm Remington Maximum in 1979. Mostly for the purpose that you see in front of you. These powders were not available in 79 to the general public. Yes, 7828 was obviously there and you could get it in factory ammo from the 7mm Remington Mag. And then Reloader 22 definitely wasn't there. But in 1986, DuPont released to the general public IMR 7828. And a few years later, um, Alliant, not known as Alliant back then, uh, but they released Reloader 22 several years later. And then Hodgson also re released H1000. And so in 1987, Lane had the very first... 7 millimeter Remington Maximum made. Oh, he also renamed it to the 7 millimeter Shooting Times Westerner. Shortly after he had his custom gun made, Lane wrote about his new rifle and his new cartridge in the Shooting Times magazine. And after that article, the 7 millimeter STW took off. From 1988 to 1997, Lane was really trying to get Remington to make it into a factory rifle and have factory ammo for it. They weren't really interested though. They, I think that what they saw was that this could uh, take sales away from the, their seven millimeter rem mag. But eventually they had their minds changed because they were getting orders for thousands of brass for the then dead eight millimeter Remington Magnum. What were they using? Why was all of that brass being ordered? Well, it was going to be sold to hand loaders for them to neck down to 7mm STW. Now, Remington was very slow to make the 7 STW a factory rifle and cartridge. Funny enough, Winchester, though, in 1993, started making factory rifles, their Model 70, in the 7mm STW Wildcat. And so... I think that was pretty interesting that uh, Winchester decided to make a rifle for a Wildcat. Officially in 1997, Remington uh, released the 7mm Shooting Times Westerner as a factory cartridge and in their factory rifle. And it did very well for a little bit. Now before we talk about the fall of the 7mm STW, I just wanted to show you its performance. And we'll see how it compares to the 7 Rem Mag and the 7 Weatherby. Now, Lane really liked using a 140 grain bullet. And you can get that going over 3,400 feet per second. That is moving. Now, later on, he really liked the versatility of the 160 grain. 
whether it, probably the partition back then and Acubon too, but uh, he could get that going just over 3,200 feet per second. Pretty good performance. Now let's see how the seven millimeter stacks up to its competition, at least back in the late 80s, early 90s. So the seven millimeter SCTW with the 160 grain Acubond is going a little bit over 3,200 feet per second. You might be able to get a little more. Energy at 400 yards, pretty darn good. 2,200 foot pounds of energy. So how does that stack up to the most popular seven millimeter? Well, the REM mag does the 160 grain at 3,050 feet per second and energy at 400 yards. It's not too far behind, but there still is a noticeable advantage for the STW. So this is just shy of 2,000 foot pounds. Now, interestingly enough, with the seven millimeter Weatherby, there is no difference. So a 160 grain, you can get it going 3,200 feet per second. And obviously all the other numbers are gonna be the exact same. So the STW isn't the most efficient cartridge. So why do I say it wasn't the most efficient cartridge? Well, in front of me, again, is a seven millimeter Remington mag. And I apologize, I couldn't find a seven millimeter STW case. And so what I have is a 300 Weatherby case, which their dimensions are actually quite similar. The case is, other than having a double radius shoulder, this is what the STW would look like if you necked it down with a, a more normal looking shoulder. And so look at the case capacity difference. Um, and it only got about 150 feet per second more. And then you got to realize the seven millimeter Weatherby has almost identical case capacity to the seven REM mag. And those two were identical in performance. So yeah, not very efficient. So why did this cartridge only have 15 minutes of fame? Well, I think some of it had to do with right after Remington officially made it a factory cartridge, they introduced the seven millimeter rum and the seven millimeter rum is just a faster version of the STW. And so that didn't help. And then in the two thousands, early two thousands, Winchester started introducing all of their short magnums. And that was kind of a craze for a little bit. Obviously the 300 WSM has still been very popular, but uh, yeah, I think the short magnums killed it. And so did the rum now for today. And, 2022 almost 2023 well you just have better options than the STW if you want a really fast seven millimeter the 28 nozzler is probably your best choice it's more efficient than the STW and you're gonna find ammo for it easier and rifles and then if you really just want to go crazy you get the seven millimeter rum so I I like the cartridge uh, it's kind of sad that it's Kind of a dead cartridge now but that's kind of the, its story 